When it comes to harnessing the power of AI, really your lowest hanging fruit is going to be to improve the quality of your prompts. Because the quality of your output from AI is largely a function of the quality of your input, which, in the case of AI chatbots and conversational agents, is your prompt. So I'm going to walk you through my eight key ingredients to keep in mind whenever you compose a prompt or the custom instructions for a GPT, a gym, or a project. And of course, not every prompt needs all eight ingredients, but the more instruction and context and constraints you provide, the more useful you'll find your responses from AI chatbots, and the less likely they'll be to go off the rails. And for you to reference as you get familiar with the ingredients, I've listed them on Productivity Nexus and linked to the page from the video description for you to bookmark. And on that page, you'll also find the demo prompt we'll be constructing here together. And while you're there, be sure to subscribe for more actionable insights around AI, automation, and systemization. Now first, let's talk about the syntax you should use to structure and format your prompts and make them easiest to interpret by chatbots. And that syntax is called Markdown, which is a widely understood method of formatting text, even when the app you're using doesn't support formatting. And this web app, Dillinger is a great place to compose your markdown. You'll see the plain text markdown on the left and then on the right, the formatted version as the AI will interpret it. And there are three key elements of markdown that are most important for you to know and use in your prompts. The first is headings. With headings, you can create sections and subsections within your prompt, which is one of the best ways to make it comprehensible for chatbots. So with Markdown, you create a top-level heading with a pound sign and a space, and then the title of the heading. And to create a subheading for a subsection within that top-level section, you take the same approach but with two pound signs. And you can create a sub-subsection within that subsection using three pound signs, and so on and so forth. And then to emphasize especially important parts of your prompt, you can make the text bold. And the way to do that with Markdown is by adding a double asterisk on either side of the text you want to emphasize. So you open the emphasis and then close it. And AI systems love lists, numbered when applicable, otherwise just a standard bullet list. So with Markdown, you just type numbers for numbered lists and dashes for bullets. And to create a nested list, you indent with four spaces. So we'll be using Markdown with headings, bold emphasis, and lists as we walk through these eight essential ingredients of an effective prompt. Now this is optional, but at the highest level of my prompts, I like to create sections for system instructions and user input. System instructions includes all of the information that remains mostly unchanged as you reuse the prompt. Or in the case of custom GPTs or GEMs, it's the instructions you add at configuration. And then the user input is where you supply the content that's unique to each invocation of the prompt, such as the text you want reviewed or summarized. And all of our eight ingredients will go into the system instruction. So the first ingredient is roles. And you always want to assign a role to the chatbot, which you can call the system in your prompt. That's one of the two elements you really want to include in every prompt that you write. Then as applicable, you can also define your own role, which you can call user, and the audience that will ultimately receive the content generated by the chatbot. So for our example, for the system, we'll say you are an expert summarizer and editorial assistant trained to help a content creator distill complex information into crisp, insightful, and structured summaries. And for the user, I am a content creator and educator who synthesizes news and delivers useful, actionable tutorials to busy, ambitious professionals. And then the audience will be busy professionals who want to stay informed and continuously learn. They need relevant, useful, actionable takeaways delivered clearly, efficiently, and intelligently. They appreciate wit, but not fluff. And then the second ingredient, and the other element that you really want to include in every prompt, is the system's objective, which is basically a short description of what you want it ultimately to generate and what that generated content needs to accomplish. 
So for our example, we'll say, I need you to transform the provided content into a high signal summary that preserves the core insights and key takeaways while enabling rapid comprehension. And then in most cases, you want to provide some sort of context, whether that's related information that the chatbot needs to know, or just framing the situation so that it can approach it through the right lens. So here we'll say, in my monthly newsletter, I draw from a broad spectrum of sources to keep my audience informed and sharp. These sources can include articles, podcasts, or YouTube videos. And topics typically relate to productivity, specifically the use of AI and automation to achieve greater efficiency and performance. And then we have the system's concrete task. And for any prompt but just the simplest request, the chatbot is going to tackle your need much more effectively if you break it into a series of smaller steps. And with a standard first few steps, you can really maximize the output. So start by instructing it to use chain of thought reasoning to complete the steps. That basically tells it to articulate its thoughts so it thinks harder and reasons. And then for the first step, ask it to carefully analyze the system instructions. And then carefully analyze the user input, including any attached or linked resources. Then give it the option to ask any follow-up questions for information that will help it complete its task and accomplish its objective. And I like to set a maximum of five of those requests. And then you want to add a condition so that it pauses and waits for your response before proceeding with the remaining task. And then allow it to search the web for any additional information that will also help it to complete its task and achieve its objective most effectively. So those are the standard steps I recommend starting with, and the following steps will be specific to your prompt until the final two, which are also standard for all prompts. So I'll add a couple of instructions for the summarizer example. And then once it's drafted its content, ask it to review the draft against all instructions and guidelines and to make any necessary changes in order to comply. And then the final step is to reply with the final content, optionally in a specified format. And the next ingredient is output guidelines where you can specify formatting, style, tone, and other attributes of the output. And for each of those attribute categories, you can create a subsection using your markdown heading. So for the summarizer's format, we'll prescribe a headline and then a bullet list of key points where each point comprises one to three complete sentences. And in some cases, style and tone are independent, but in this case, we'll combine them. So we'll ask the chatbot to be succinct and direct with no filler, professional and intellectual yet accessible and to avoid jargon, to include a hint of subtle wit, to think of itself as a smart, likable teaching assistant rather than a corporate memo writer or YouTuber, and to draw inspiration from the online publications The Verge and Vox. And then you can specify a response type. In this case, we'll request markdown. And then when applicable, one of the most transformative prompting strategies is to show the chatbot what a successful output looks like by including examples. And in some cases, you can provide example pairs of inputs with their outputs. This is known as few-shot prompting, but for our summarizer, I'll just provide three examples of final summaries, each one with its headline and bulleted key points. And for AI models, sometimes telling it what not to do is just as important as telling it what to do. By specifying constraints, you keep it from getting overly creative and in some cases going completely off the rails and hallucinating. So for our summarizer, we'll tell it to avoid cliches, buzzwords and colloquialisms, vague phrases, summarizing tone or mood, copying text directly from the source, repeating the heading in the bullet points, and injecting its own opinions. And then lastly, we have our success criteria, which is basically a recap of the most important rules and guidelines we've issued previously. And this is the section we've asked the chatbot to validate against in the last step of its task. So then when you'd invoke the prompt in the user input, you'd supply the content to be summarized along with any special instruction. Or in the case of a custom GPT or gym, the system instructions would be provided at configuration, and then the user input would be the individual prompts sent to the custom chatbot. So when we bring it all together, our system instructions with the eight essential ingredients, and then a placeholder for the user input, we get an incredibly sophisticated prompt for maximizing the usefulness of your outputs from AI.
Bookmark that Productivity Nexus page to reference as you get familiar with the framework, and be sure to subscribe for more insights around AI, automation, and systemization.